Welcome to the a Hello Podcast. My name is RJ. We have Andy and Mike as always. Uh, today we're coming at you with a special interview. This is our second uh, or third interview. Third interview. Um, and so we are getting better at this as we go. Um, <laughs> but Mike, who do we have here today? Today we have the man, not the restaurant, the local legend, brutal Bob Evans, everyone. Thank you for joining us. We super appreciate taking the time out of your day. Sure. What's up, guys? How are you? Doing well. Good, good. Yeah, well. I'm fine. Thank you. Good. Great. Nice. So, uh, we were connected through a uh, mutual friend, through Rick, who we interviewed a couple weeks ago. Um, you know, yep. Both of you been in the business for a very, very long time, uh, different right. parts of the business. But, um, you know, you are here to, you know, to kind of talk about what you have going on. And I think we kind of want to just jump right into that, right? Um, before we well, get yeah. into any other questions. Sure. Yeah, it's great to, yeah, it's, it's Rick's uh, the man. He's, he's a great guy. And uh, he and I, we actually kind of grew up together, but we didn't really know each other too well. Um, but then uh, what happened was, I'm driving, guys, so that's why I'm, I'm not distracted <laughs> any more than usual. But, uh, that's fine. So, We're used to people not making eye contact with us anyway. So. Okay, good. Well, <laughs> <laughs> my, son, my son has autism. He must have got it from somewhere. So, you know, um, I'm assuming he got it from me. <laughs> my wife's pretty straight pretty straight shooter so um but yeah I, I got i started talking to rick probably very regularly about four or five years ago when i started a project called hangs with bob gets better and it was a seminar project i was doing where i was going out on the road and teaching uh you know wrestlers along the independent scene all over the country that there's a better way to do things and um uh, there's a better way to make money and honor your family and you don't just have to be a guy who's kind of you know uh, the dirt worst and the scumbag and doesn't treat his family well. And, you know, I, I, not that, not that this isn't real life and we have to deal with real issues, but I think there's always been a big chasm in wrestling where you're either Christian debuting on AEW the other day, or <laughs> you're, uh, the dirt, dirt worst broke indie wrestler who leaves his family and makes no money and steals from everyone. So, and I believe there is a giant uh, middle class in the middle where we can uh, be good independent wrestlers, have fun, travel the country, support ourselves, not bite into the family budget, and then come home and treat our families well, honor our families, honor our wives and children. And my, my whole thing is a lot of people are very interested in doing that, but a lot of people don't know how to do that because, again, wrestling is based on a lot of traditions that are about 50 years behind the times. You know, you bring up yep. certain marketing terms that have been around for 30 years and the wrestlers just shrug at you. So um, <laughs> many of them know about social media, but they really don't know about anything else. The hustle, the groundwork that it takes to build a reputation for yourself. They think they can just put a couple of Facebook posts up or a couple of tweets up and they're going to get, you know, fame and fortune and riches are just going to fall upon them. And it's just not the way it goes. It does take some work. But I also feel that wrestling right now is in such an interesting place where a lot of it is part-time. I mean, even if you look at it, WWE and AEW and all the big time guys are even kind of quote unquote part-time now because they can't tour. So the touring is what used to beat us up. So if we can kind of limit our touring to places we want to go, places that really enrich us and find ways to make money along the way, then I think we can really have a, a, a nice balance between being a pro wrestler getting your yayas out as a wrestler, but still coming home and being a good dad or a, a mom or and a, you know, a husband and wife and, 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 you know, whatever your roles are in the family. And really it's been a big thing for me because I went full-time wrestling. I was 26 years into wrestling when I decided to go full-time and it was a wow. disaster. Um, it didn't really work well for me. I, in 2018, it lasted about seven or eight months and what happened was as soon as i classified wrestling as a job i didn't want to do it anymore it was one of the reasons why i didn't go full-time earlier but i you know i felt my own pressure of well i want to give it a try i want to give it a shot but i i, I wasn't i needed a job to kind of regulate me and i think a lot of people are like that they need jobs to they need a place to go to every day mm -hmm. and they need to keep a schedule for add adhd people in the creative arts which is all all of wrestling 
um, I've heard some studies and these are, these are not, uh, these are anecdotal studies, but I've heard up to 80 or 90% of wrestlers and creative people are ADD and ADHD. So, okay. um, so it's, it's one of those things where we're bad at keeping schedules anyway. And now you put <laughs> us having a good time and getting lost in the dream. And now it's like, you kind of need that structure at home and that's kind of where we are. So it, it's, it's a, it's a funny balance to strike, but I think it can be done. And, uh, I've, decided to put up this uh, site so the hangs with bob stuff started all that and now i'm working going towards a uh, membership community called the wrestlelife.com and i call it that because wrestling and life in my in my world can't be separated so they're together and that's kind of where we are right now so yeah that's that's really what i'm excited about right now and especially since um I'm going to park here and then I'll just be able to sit and talk with you guys but <laughs> in a in a in a world where we haven't really had a lot of live shows going on guys um we kind of need something that's going to teach us these basics and get us ready to go on the road again i just signed up for my first live event at the end of april and i'm raring to go but you know some people weren't raring to go you know so it's uh it's going to be interesting who jumps in who doesn't jump in right away as far as live touring but they'll now that i have more of an online presence and more of an organized online presence i'm excited to teach basically the world the, the concepts i know have you have you found that you know with covid uh it, it slowed down everything have you found wrestlers who aren't working as much being demotivated because of covid or they're more motivated now because they want to get back into it yeah i mean i've seen i've seen some people just quit which was interesting i've seen you know i've wow. seen people walk away i've seen people uh well you know you, you say you quit and then you come back six months later well yeah <laughs> there's a show the terry you know yeah exactly so <laughs> it's kind of yeah it's uh you know it's kind of like that, you know, if Terry Funk was ready, he'd be raring to go too, but, <laughs> um, <laughs> he's probably still better than half the business anyway. So yeah. Um, probably. yeah, Terry's the man, but so I'm going to park right here. So yeah, I think it's, it's been different for everybody guys. So it's, uh, it's one of those things that has really been all over the map. I've had people that are actually touring. Um, one of my guys that, uh, I've been coaching, uh, close up, uh, Jack Parker. He actually takes a pretty prominent role on my site. Cause Jack's one of these guys that just went and made a bunch of money. So, um, but so Jack's doing a great job on the road, but Jack got 30 dates in last year because wow. he was down okay. South and a lot of them were limited. A lot of them were people wearing masks, a lot of them, all that. But I mean, Jack got 30 dates. He was pretty regular. Um, as far as touring, there were other people that, I mean, I haven't been in a ring in a year. So over a year now, so, um, and I'm not going to get another ring for another about five, six, five, six weeks. So it's, uh, it kind of goes across the spectrum, but really, yeah, I think, I think I've seen more people be excited to get in than, but I was surprised how many people weren't jumping in. A lot of people are still stressing safety, which I respect. And a lot of people are still stressing, eh, I don't know if I want to jump into it now. Plus you have a year, you have a year off and you have a year of not taking bumps and, yeah, you got to shake the rust off. You got to shake the rust off, and you also have to get used to touring again, driving around, hunting down shows, getting booked again. Like, that's 75. The wrestling is the fun part, and the other stuff can be fun, too. Um, I love booking travel. I love I love booking travel for other people, too. I love getting people shows, getting people booked. I'm all about that. But eventually, you got to kind of do it yourself. And if you don't, if we don't supply these people with these tools, they're not going to – they're not going to know to use them. It's not even a question of what the thing I noticed is a lot of the old timers were telling me, um, Oh, these kids are, I hear it all the time. We all young disrespectful kids and yada, yada, yada. And it's, it's really not disrespect guys. It's, it's, it's a lot more ignorance instead of arrogance. It's a lot more not knowing things. I don't know something. And then when I teach it to them, they're excited. They want to learn. So I haven't really found, um, a lot of people unwilling to pick up these messages. I think we just need to get it out there, get the word out. And that's one of the reasons why I'm on today. Just kind of wake people up to this and say, if you want to do this, there's other ways to do this rather than getting yelled at, uh, you know, Oh, you have to stay home and you, you know, or you got to go to the WWE or you're a failure. And I, I know plenty of people that went to the WWE and were failures and not failures in life particularly, but they didn't do as well as they wanted to. And, you know, it takes a toll on you. I mean, I'm old enough to remember all, you know, I mean, people I knew, I, not 
very, very close friends, but people I used to wrestle on shows with. I mean, it was for a while, guys. It was like once a month, once every couple of months that we were, people were getting sent home, you know, and, and in a box, unfortunately. I hate to be so wow. cat, you know, but, yeah. it, you know, that was the, the 90s and early 2000s. And now it's a, it's much better. But now the mental health issue is a thing, too. And we got to pay attention to that. And we have to, it's, it's, it's really kind of an interesting time. It is with all the cancel culture and the, the mental health. And I feel like everybody's trying to do the right thing and nobody knows how to deliver the message without hurting someone else's feelings or making somebody mad. And I, that's, it, it's not an easy, it's not an easy tightrope to walk. And I, so I, I do my best to try to deliver messages without hurting people, but being honest enough to tell them, you know, Hey, you might not make it in WWE. You might not have the talent, but that doesn't mean you can't build skills to wrestle on the road and, and entertain people. There's plenty of road comics that don't have sitcoms and movies. Hmm. And, you know, there's plenty of musicians that are awesome musicians that are, you know, that play in bars and they make a few hundred bucks a night, a few hundred bucks on a weekend. And they're great musicians. They just haven't had a shot or they're doing other things and they don't want to. So um, I don't look at that as settling because again, a lot of people are like me. I, I didn't really want to be full time. I had 20 times. I was at books as an extra during the attitude era over 20 times. And I never came back in much better shape. I never, you know, they said, Oh, you got to come back in better shape. You got to do this. I was like, I don't really want to, I, I, I want to stay in shape. I want to wrestle, but I don't know if I want to wrestle for a living. And I should have listened to myself years ago because my opinion never changed. And then when I got married and kids came around and more responsibilities came, I mean, I was lucky. I was raised by a dad who, made hard decisions so he could be home with us and my mom the same way. I was fortunate, but not everybody had that. And especially as I'm mentoring a lot of young people, many people don't have that. So I was lucky. So I wanted to be the example that my parents set for me. So I wanted to be a good dad. I wanted to be a good husband. I'm still working on the husband part. Unfortunately, <laughs> you know, I think we all are. <laughs> right. So, but the kid, I've done pretty well with the dad thing. The kids like me, so that's good. And, you know, I, <laughs> they behave themselves and they do all right in school. So we got that down. And, and I just, but I mean, you know, I've been out the last, I mean, aside from 2020, obviously, but 2016, 2017, 18 and 19, I was doing an average of 50 or 60 shows a year, which is really busy. So, yeah, yeah, you know, and then, but when I, I needed, I needed to do it, at, even if I work at this. I was sitting, you know, we were joking about computers because we had a computer issue earlier. Um, but I was, I bought a laptop. I got a laptop for Christmas from my wife and kids and I'm building websites now and I'm hosting, you know, I'm, I'm hosting message boards and I'm putting up videos and I'm, you know, putting out content and on a regular basis. And I have to come up with ideas for shows and ideas to reach people, you know, and there it is right there. So, um, some of my work I was working on today. So, um, so that's why it's, you know, and, and I'm doing the best I can, but I'm learning every day. I actually have a coaching call with my teacher on his podcast in a couple of days, and he's going to tear me up and rip me a new one and give me next steps and all that. So, <laughs> um, so, you know, but it's, it's fun to be a student again, as I'm an authority in wrestling. So I'm usually the guy that people ask for answers. They ask me questions. I give them answers. So now it's a different thing where I get to be a student again. I get to learn. So that's fun. So, and a lot of stuff I've been taught in the marketing stuff has really been stuff I've been able to turn around and teach my people too. So it's been great. So yeah, you, I'm, you I feel been, like I'm just yelling at you three. Say no. something. <laughs> say something. <laughs> you, you've been the point person for, for a lot of things. I mean, you, you've done tons of charity shows. You set up charity shows, uh, you know, mainly uh, uh, something like the Station Fire uh, charity event that you had where you didn't charge admission. You know, you just asked people to make a donation to, you know, to HJY's, uh, you know, charity fund that they had set up. Um, you know, you've done a plethora of shows. I mean, so, you know, you're, you're a huge part of just, you know, the, the community as a whole, not just as a wrestler, not just as a, a mentor. You're someone who's sort of set in an example like you were saying like you're trying to be the good husband you're trying to be the good father but you're also being a huge part of the community um is that something that just came natural to you or is it something that as you realize that you sort of had this reputation that you almost felt obligated to do this kind of thing or 
you know, what, what kind of led to, to just setting up events, you know, and, and in some cases at the drop of a hat, you know, kind of, how did, how did that even come to well, be? I, you know, I, I, I wasn't responsible for that, for setting up that station fire thing. I was part of it. I, I participated. Um, but I think that was other people that set that up. So I'd be okay. disingenuous if I said that, but I, I was always happy to jump in and help if I was around. We, we're actually doing their, uh, one of our brothers in North Carolina just found out he's a younger guy too. Uh, found out um, Brian, uh, Brian, he wrestles as Lance Lude. He's one of the ugly ducklings. But it's a big, ind- oh, big yeah. independent tag team. They're very, they're lots yeah. of fun. We've re- Tim and I, they're my great. partner Tim Hughes and I have wrestled them. Yeah, they're great. So uh, Lance is, uh, he, got, he found out he had colon cancer and is a young guy too. So oh, yeah. um, so Colby Carino and, and I'm very close friends with Steve Carino and Colby and the whole that whole family. And like I said, the Ducks I've always been a big fan of and had, had good matches with them. So we're doing... So they're going to do a big fundraiser for Lance down there at the end of April. And I'm, I told them I'd run down there and do a seminar for free and just give Lance all the money. You know, I have charge the guys, and then I'll give Lance all the money. So, you know, you got to do what you can for people. Hey, and there they are. So the gentleman, <laughs> on, the gentleman on the right, the shorter man on the right, that's Lance Lude. And uh, he's struggling right now. But we're, uh, you know, we're hoping to, uh, you know, I'm sure the guys will raise a lot of money. He has a lot of friends in North Carolina. The North Carolina wrestling community is very tight-knit. So I imagine that's going to be a star-studded affair too. So, um, hey, look, there's Rich, there's Richard that there's Rich. right there. <laughs> I, I, somehow I knew he'd rear his ugly head. So, uh, so yeah, we're we're uh, we're going to do that. And yeah, I've, you know, it, if we can help somebody, I've never been one to like do like car washes or sell candy or things like that for charity. But tell me to organize a wrestling event, I'll do that because that's the way I express myself, and that's the way I can get the most people to show up. Heck yeah. Excuse me, and do things. So, um, but yeah, we've uh, yeah we've done we've done some good charity work in the past. You know, it's uh, it's you know you wrestle as many matches as I do, guys. A few of them are going to be for charities and things like that. So, it's uh, twenty nine years last month. So it's been uh, wow. been a hell of a ride. So yeah, I'd say. So, speaking of lots of matches, I want to oh. bring this up. <laughs> I want I want to make sure that we had time to talk about this. So, I was like, I want to I want to. Just Google Bob Evans. I, you know, let's oh, say I don't scary. know. That's I don't know. Thing. You never know yeah. what you might find. <laughs> <laughs> so we got to talk about these matches that you had with Max Moon back on the indie scene. Yeah, Max Moon was he was a nice guy, Paul. Uh, I I it was one of those things where I was like a year in the business, and he's like, "Yeah, we'll just go out and we'll, you know, call it out there." And and he he took good care of me, but man, that was. That was scary because that was a big crowd. So yeah, I was gonna say was that about, watching it was a huge. There it huge is. Crowd. Look at that! Look at that's back when Bob had hair. That's how long ago that was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I loved Max Moon back in the day. He he was a you know he that's looked right. like a larger than life character. You know, with that yeah, that was, yeah, he was good. I'm glad he got it. I'm glad he got it like another year or two out of it because Paul was a good hand man. He was a good guy. He ended up doing some training at Shawn Michaels Wrestling School for a while. I don't think he does anything with wrestling anymore, but, um, yeah, he was nice to me, man. It was, uh, that was a scary, but there were about, yeah, there were about five, 600 people in that, at that show. And then I think, um, I'm trying to, I'm trying to think, uh, the Bushwhackers were there nails. It was like a lot of the WWF guys that had just left. And I was like a year in wrestling, man. And I was scared to death. It was crazy. <laughs> so but thank God. Nails, nice that's a name. And then uh, here's a here's a very here's a very strange here's a really weird trivia question. So the guy that ran those shows, who shall remain nameless, uh, he ended up getting in trouble because he was holding up grocery stores to get uh, the money for his joke. <laughs> <laughs> he would go rob the grocery store in town. Jeez. And then all of a sudden he'd have the money to pay everybody. So. But yeah, welcome to the wrestling business. Does that make everyone that had a match an accomplice? How does that work? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> I, well, we didn't know this until later. He didn't, yeah. he didn't announce that he's like, hey, I knocked over the, the, the you know, I knocked over the 7 Eleven or anything. I think it was more of a, you know, I think it was a, a, it was a surprise to us when we found out. So. <laughs> But yeah, he was a character. Oh man, were you surprised but not surprised? 
You're like, oh, well, yeah, that makes it was. I could totally see that guy holding journey. up a, now a I story. Be surprised at all. <laughs> <laughs> was was that the worst yeah, promoter well, that you worked for? The worst promoter that I worked for. Let's see. What, what, I was gonna say, uh, was that the worst one? No, the worst promoter I worked for was probably. <laughs> no, no, he paid me what he was supposed to pay me, so that's fine. So, he held up his side of the deal. He, he held up more than that. I was way, way, way. <laughs> exactly. I was, I was long gone. So it was. This was months later. He got caught. So, um, oh, let me see. I think, no, the promoter probably he body slammed me on the gym floor for real. Swung a chair at me like a baseball bat. So that's probably the worst promoter. Yeah, that's probably the worst guy. I would say. Yeah, a little reckless. That sounds awful. Yeah, that was the. Worst. <laughs> I've I've, been, I've had pretty good luck, so <laughs> that's good luck. <laughs> yeah, I've had I've had I've had uh, I've had pretty good luck. <laughs> so um, we met. You mentioned earlier, um, you know, being booked as an extra or enhancement talent. Um, how how much different is that yeah. than? Just a regular old match. So what what sort of planning? Is there a different flow to the match? How much control do you have over it? Or is it just like, hey, I'm just going to just drive you to the ground for like five, five minutes, and then we're just going to call it quits? <laughs> yeah, um, the, the, the first time I – because I, I was taught to call it on the fly. I was taught to kind of just go call it as you go, like – most people were back in the day, but TV was always different. Even back then it was different. When I started doing it in 1993, they called it from soup to nuts, the whole thing from the beginning to the end. And I thought that okay. was just crazy, even though that's how a lot of matches are called. A lot of matches are called these days like that um, because they're so intricate and they're so involved. Um, I still, but yeah, whenever I did TV, we pretty much called the whole thing. I can't think of too many times where it was, there was a lot of wiggle room in the middle. It was mostly called the whole time. You know, I still like a little bit of creativity. I like, um, I like a little bit of both. I like having a good fishbone of a match, a good outline, and then being able to fill in the, fill in the blanks in the middle. I think that's really, I think that's really how everybody goes because you never know what's going to happen, especially in independent wrestling. You know, something might happen, the ring might break or somebody might get hurt or you're working with a green guy, kind of a younger guy. He might not be able to, pull off what you're trying to get him to pull off and you might have to slow him down, put him in a hold and kind of calm him down a little bit. So <laughs> I, I end up being put in that position of the calming people down a lot, you know, so the nerves take, I don't over. yell and scream like I used to. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, they do. They do. And that's another thing they tell you. Oh, if you, if you are nervous, brother, you don't love this business and you don't want to do it anymore. If you're not you don't have butterflies, I was like, dude, I haven't had butterflies and, 10 years I, you know it's town to town to town to town to town and i i love it i'm not i'm not acting like i'm above it or i'm not being flip about it it's just after a while you kind of can anticipate just about everything that's going on i mean if something is that nerve-wracking then maybe you shouldn't be doing it i mean yeah and obviously when i worked for ring of honor and WWE and all that it was a little more nerve-wracking but it was what it was. I mean, you know, in the end, it's still wrestling. You still got to get, the, you still got to get it done. You still have a job to do. So, and you know, it's fine. I think the last time I had some, a little bit of butterflies was we did impact in Vegas and I screwed up one little thing. And then Tim was right there to take over and take the move. So it didn't look that bad. And that was it. So, and, uh, but that was, I don't know, a couple of years ago, but, no, I don't get too nervous anymore. Who knows, though? Maybe at the end of April when I go back out there again, I'll be nervous because it's it'll have it's been fresh a, again. over a year since I've been in public and talked to people. And I mean, <laughs> I've been in public, but I mean, not in a wrestling <laughs> situation. So. so you talked about, you know, you're, you're running Ring of Honor. Um, how did that come about? Because that was, you know, later on in your in your career. Um and you had you had a good run there. Like how how that all come about? Yeah, I remember the first. I, I remember I I showed up and I'd done a few dark matches because Gabe Sapolsky, the original Booker, always liked me because I was on the first independent show he ever saw. So he liked me. 
So I don't think he ever thought I was particularly good. I think he just liked, thought I was a nice guy, which look, have to look, if they can get you in the room, you can always get better. You just got to get in the room. So, um, so the first couple of times I did it, I didn't really take it seriously because I didn't think they were looking for a job and I wasn't looking for a job. And, um, you know, I was a bit arrogant about it. I thought I was better than a lot of the people and I really wasn't, but I just, at the time I just had my certain opinions about ring of honor and, um, but as I kept going, I started to realize that I could really learn something from them and I could really, this would be my best shot at getting a national spot because they were running, a, they were running part-time so I could still have a job. I could still, you know, hang out with my wife and kids and kind of still be around, but I could kind of get the traveling part down and, you know, wrestle some of the best wrestlers and I could manage Mike Bennett, which is Mike, I've known Mike Bennett since he was 18. So wow, Mike's a great guy. So, um, and then I went to the first trial camp and Mike Bennett and I were the two best guys at the trial camp. And then Jim Cornette called me later and said, I don't really see you wrestling because I wanted, I want you to manage Mike. I want you to help him. And, you know, I think you're a really good wrestler, but you're not ring of, you know, you're not ring of honor right now. So, um, Hey, there I am. So, um, <laughs> and then in about, so, so what I did was I, I, I was a good boy. I, I, I managed for a while. I did exactly what I was told because I was the low man on the totem pole. And in about a year, year and a half, I asked if I could wrestle. They let me wrestle Eddie Edwards and I did pretty well. And then they let me wrestle again. And I wrestled a few other guys. I got to wrestle Adam Cole in Providence, Rhode Island in front of a sold out house. And then I got to wrestle, um, later on, I got to team with Berger, who was become one of my best friends in wrestling and a great guy. And, um, you know, we ended up opening up, opening up two final battles together and, you know, the big shows at the end of the year. And it, it was fun. It was, it was a good run. It was supposed to be, you know, the first three or four years I was there, they kept saying that I was getting fired, get let go. No, no room for him. <laughs> and I lasted eight and a half years. So it's a pretty good run fellows, you know? So yeah, that's a really good I did run. All right. So I, I yeah, did okay. I'd say so. And I was never, I was never under contract. Yeah, it was, it was never under contract. I had a, I had a handshake deal, and you know, it, at the end, I was only going in once every, you know, occasionally. But it was great to see, and I, and I, you know, the cool thing about Ring of Honor is it's been such a feeding system for everything else that, at pretty much every match I watch on TV now has a has a friend or an, it's an acquaintance in it now. And I think that's really cool because you get to see all your friends doing well and get to see everybody succeed. And, you know, it's, it's, it's great. So it's, uh, it's, it's been a blast. This, this cheeseburger right there. Oh, it looks like I'm going to jump them because I probably, yeah. <laughs> so, I think that's when I tried to cut his, I think it's when I tried to cut his hand off with the sock. So. <laughs> yeah, but what about the match? Saying, cut his hand off with the <laughs> <laughs> What's that? I said, yeah, but what about the match? That would be illegal. (laughs) That'd be cheating. (laughs) Oh, I lost. (laughs) Uh, Too funny. So, oh no, I I lost my questions. I've trained a thousand people. I've changed lives, and I'm known for I'm known for trying to cut a guy's hand off and going through a table. Those are the two things I'm known for. So, you know. I mean, in the wrestling world, I mean, those are pretty important things to be remembered for. <laughs> RJ, we might have been at that show in Providence. That's true. That's true. Um, yeah. Was that the one at the convention center in Providence? Civic Center? You might. Yeah, maybe. You might have. Uh, yes. Eddie, Kings, Eddie Kingston and Steen main event. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Yep. Went to so many. I don't remember half of them. Got <laughs> it. Yeah. Yep. Everything blends in. So. Yep. And then every and it was it was the dumbest. That was such a crazy. That was such a crazy circumstance because all I did is said all I did is I, I emailed Jim Cornette and Delirious and said, "Hey, I want to wrestle Adam Cole. He's a friend of mine. I haven't had a chance to wrestle him yet. And uh, uh, it's going to be a house show in Rhode Island, Providence. So I can work with him because it's a house show. And I'm 15 minutes down the road. You don't have to pay anybody like extra." gas money or anything or pay somebody in and i can probably draw sell a lot of tickets because it's close to home and jim's like yeah that sounds like a great idea let's do it but you can wrestle adam cole that's fine and then 
two or three weeks later, Ring of Honor decides they're going to do a pay-per-view, uh, an eye pay-per-view in Providence on that show. And then Adam Cole wins the TV title. So all of a sudden, this little house show match um, that Bob wanted just to have a good match in Rhode Island turned into a proving ground match with the manager of Mike Bennett versus one of the hottest wrestlers in Ring of Honor. So, so, and it really wasn't supposed to be that way, but it kind of turned out that way. And we ended up having a good match. I, I, I really like Adam. He's, he's, uh, he's been a good throughout the years. He still talks to me, so it's good. When I message him, he messages me back once in a while, so that's great. But he's, uh, <laughs> Adam Cole is a great guy. Deserves all his success. What a good what a good dude. What a talented man, too. Yeah, I remember when he came into Ring of Honor. Uh, it was like him and Kyle O'Reilly kind of at the same time. They were kind of just doing uh, almost like enhancement kind of kind of spots. And I was like, these are two guys I need to hang on to. And they just, they just took off from there. They yeah. ran with it, yeah. Um, so... Yes, sir. Thirty years, right? We're coming coming upon in the ring. You know, you, you've you've named a lot of names that you've been in the ring with. Who are like your, if you had to say the top five people that you've been in the ring with, where you're just like, man, this person is just on another another level. Like, who are the some of the best people that you've ever faced inside the ring? The guys who have been in the, I'm sorry, you're breaking up a little bit. The guys who are just really good and unbelievable. Yeah, like who you thought, like they're on a whole nother level, like they just some of the best that you've ever faced. Oh. Um, I would say the guys, probably people that you would recognize easily would be, I thought Drew Gulak was the best technical wrestler I've ever been in the ring with closely followed by little guido i think little guido he, he had a that fbi gimmick but he was super 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 talented as far as and he was a real shoot wrestler too real sh- yeah um, was he was U- UWFI? finn balor back in the fergal days when he first started in the states that was one of his first opponents he was awesome yeah he was awesome back in the day and then uh kyle riley bobby fish um you know, those those were some really, really quality opponents. Uh, Perry Saturn, um, you know, just some just some really, really talented dudes. You know, as far as the local guys, the New England guys, um, I always thought the top New England guys were like Wagner Brown, Alex Arion, Maverick Wild. And then you get on to some guys now, Vinny Marcellia, Matt Taven, Mike Bennett, all those guys. So... There's a lot of quality out there, guys. I mean, there's and there's a ton of indie guys that nobody knows about that are really good. Yep. I wrestled absolutely. a guy in Quebec, Quebec City, and he's a guy who's a perfect example of the rest of life. His name is Marco Estrada, and he's the, one of the biggest stars in Eastern Canada. Makes great money, but he's a prison guard and he loves his work, so he just wrestles on the weekends. But he's <laughs> he's jacked. He's awesome. He could get signed by anybody right now. But he has a good life up up in Canada. You know, he's great. Um, he's one of the best guys I've ever wrestled. Marcus Burke is another guy up there. He's a guy. He's come down to Vermont a few times to wrestle, um, and he came down for me to wrestle uh, in Mass a couple times. And uh, Ring of Honor was looking at him real close, and it just didn't click. But I thought he was just a fantastic. What a what a what a just a main event guy. You know, just a real man. Big 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 tall dude. Good looking guy. Just. Real, real great. So it was, I've been, I've been fortunate. I've been in the ring with a lot of really talented people. So I got to wrestle Danny Birch. Um, you know when he was kind of, you know, uh, when he was Martin Stone, when he was kind of on his comeback trail. Mm-hmm. In between the end, and what a what a good locker room guy. And I've always been pretty close to uh, Biff Oni Lorkin because he was from ba- he's from Barrington. He's right down the street from me, and. He's he's a heck of a dude too. Like two just hardworking guys. I'm glad they I'm glad they got their due because they're just they were fantastic, you know. So those are the yeah. guys I would say right away. Hey, and Adam Bull, obviously. I mean, Adam awesome. I mean, so I mean, it's so many talented people out there. I was not expecting I was not expecting Perry Saturn. I want to hear that story. Like that's yeah. like, <laughs> what a what a like Everybody talks about like underrated wrestlers, I and mean, he's always up there. Like, 
such a fantastic Perry, talent. Perry was, I agree, and I think there should be a movie done about Perry because Perry is a has a really interesting story. He had, he grew up, he was on the street, just a, a, a tough guy who got kind of raised on the streets, and and then he had a, he had some tragedy. I guess he had one of his kids passed away at a young age, and um, and he was just one of these guys that really just made it, you know, you know? and. I haven't talked to him in years, but I always liked him. He always treated me great. We wrestled, me and my friend Johnny Royal, we wrestled in a tag team match against him, John Cronus, oh, wow. in, thir- in front of 38 people at the uh, na- uh, the Hudson Lines Hall in Hudson, New Hampshire, right before they got signed to ECW and kind of went on their way. And uh, But they were, they were cool, man. And then when I saw Perry... I got to wrestle Perry in a tag match with Dean Malenko at TV and Perry was the same guy, man. He was, you know, he, he was the same guy. He was very, he was very cool, but he was a no nonsense dude, man. And I, I'd hate, I, he liked me. Thank goodness. But I, I him. He beat the hell out of you. I'm sure. So, and I've heard, and I've heard a lot of, I've heard a lot of things about him, like saving people and standing up for people and things like mm-hmm. that. And I think he's one of those guys who's like, he's a super interesting dude. Like, I, he's been through a lot lately. I know he's had some issues, and but yeah, that's that's a guy that somebody should be one of these, you know, these people that run these movie studios. Because somebody was saying there's thirty eight, there's thirty eight media studios now. They don't even call them movie studios; they call them media studios. But um, and they said that like they're looking for content. I think. He should sit down, man. I pay a hundred grand to listen and tell <laughs> yeah, a story, yeah. and then see if you make a movie out of it or a series or something, based on the life of you know. So, but yeah, good, good guy, stand up guy, guy, but scary dude, scary. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> Former Army Ranger, wasn't he? Um. So we talked before, you know, we kind of set up this whole podcast, and and to go back to the wrestle life, um. You know, you had mentioned that you had some goals for your for your wrestle life, you know, program. Um, did you want to talk a little bit about that and and kind of where you really want to take this and and uh, you know how how you want this to impact the wrestling community? Yeah, I mean, it's uh, it, it really the biggest thing, guys, is I I just want people to see that there's a way to succeed in wrestling without necessarily having to. I'll throw everything else away. That's my whole thing. I, I don't care. I can teach you how to get signed. I've gotten, I've helped, I helped gotten a ton of people signed. I've got, I've negotiated people's contracts for them. I've, you know, it, I, I've given people advice. I've told people to sign places and not sign other places. So I have that experience too. I produce TV. I've, you know, I produce, you know, I've, I've helped, I've helped big national stars with their promos. I've helped people with their matches. I've, I've wrestled these people i've done a lot of stuff i i had my run my own wrestling school for 10 years so i have a lot of experience but again that doesn't necessarily translate into i want to get a job in in wrestling and i want to i i want to go tour and be full-time and this and that my whole thing is you can build your own business get your social media up get your learn how to travel we teach you how to travel better we we have kevin kelly the you know the old wwe announcer ring of honor announcer in New Japan world and now Berkman is a dear friend of mine. Kevin is in the is in the community now too and he's helping people with their promos, how to communicate, all that good stuff. And we sit down with a new member every single week. We just started doing this a couple weeks ago and we have it on a screen share just like this. And we sit down with that person, me and my friend Mike Medina who wrestles as Wildman Congo, we sit down and we talk, we'll break down a 12 minute match. It'll take us an hour to break the thing down because we pause wow. it we go back we say now look at this look what you could have done here look at this promo you could look you didn't look into the camera you didn't do this why didn't you look into the camera why did you... well so, again thank you so um, much for joining us is there I anything go, else you'd like to say yes qu- yes i want to help you guys do you guys have a question for me how i can help you guys with your business um oh, do you think uh we should be more attractive to uh be more successful <laughs> That's it's not possible. It's not possible. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's how. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, no, honestly, um, 
Yeah, I'm not even sure. Yes. Uh, you know what? You, you threw me for a curveball because I wasn't really prepared for a question from you, actually. Um, <laughs> do you have advice for us, actually? So we're, we're this is relatively young. This is episode 22, Three. 23. So we're literally just starting out. Um, so you mentioned you had a podcast or and you participate in many podcasts. What uh, what sort of advice could you just give mm -hmm. us off the cuff, I guess? Well, the best advice I can give you guys is one of the things I've noticed, and you might have seen it on my feed or if you're following it, is the Johnners podcast. Um, they're probably doing it the best. Um, that's a podcast network, um, but they are, they are sharing and being prolific in sharing all their content and getting the word out. I can tell you the podcasts that I know about, the ones that are serving their, their customers and their listeners are the best are the ones that are putting out content and letting people know about it. Now, remember this, when you guys put something out on Facebook or Twitter, you'd have to put it out about a hundred times a day to reach everybody in your audience. Even if you have a small oh, audience, yeah. just because of the way the algorithm the algorithms are and the way things get moved around on, on that. So, and then don't, if you're just starting out, don't worry about all that, but if you can share it four or five times a day, uh, in a good way. Don't just spam everyone to death. Put a little comment, put something. <laughs> hey, Christian got, you know, hey, Christian got signed to AEW. That reminds me of this. Hey, the 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 thing didn't go off that well and the explosion match didn't go off that well. So that reminds <laughs> me of this other time when Bob got abducted by aliens and what a crazy show that was. And, you know, so, you know, keep all that up. <laughs> so keep all that up and really just be prolific. Get the word out. Um, and, and don't be afraid to use Facebook ads if you really want to get your audience up. Um, I can tell you with Facebook ads, make sure you're uh, doing it. You're not just boosting a post half-heartedly. Look into it. Take a little class on it from YouTube if you have to and do it that way. And then um, give your audience something. Give your audience something to follow you. Hey, if you follow us, you have a chance to win a shirt. If you follow us, you have a chance to be a guest on the podcast. Um, we're going to offer a special interview that we did live with uh, Bob Evans and it, it's uh, 15 minutes and uh, of gold and we didn't release it here. We're going to release it uh, to the person, to the 500th person that follows us or the thousand person that follows us. If you guys can get, or if you guys can get 150 likes on this, we'll do this or do do something for WrestleMania, you know, do, and, and, you know, or if you guys, it, Father's Day, right? Because I mean, you're the dad's guys. So, and, you know, you got more experience of being dads than I do with all the kids you got running around. So, but use that as a, but use that as a sell. You guys, but you guys have a hook. You guys have a hook. All joking aside, right? So, use that as a hook. Use that as something that that'll push you forward. It's a busy, it's a busy marketplace. But I can tell you, the biggest thing you guys should be uh, ner not nervous about, you should feel good about, is not many people get to twenty three podcast episodes. Um, and not many people, even though it's easier to do than ever, not many people are doing it. So push forward, be prolific, be consistent and just push your brand, show up at different wrestling shows, pass out flyers, do the old school stuff too. make friends nice. with wrestlers, have wrestlers on, have other people on from other different fields that make sense to you. Um, yeah. and then just again, push the brand and it doesn't have to be salesy or like my stuff. I don't think is. My stuff is awesome, but I'm not going to sit here and sell people on it like crazy. I'm just going to tell people it's awesome. They should come see it. We have done. I go on the rest of the life Facebook page. You don't have to pay a dime. I have three or four free classes on there. Um, you don't, you don't pay a dime, nothing. So, and eventually we'll get to the point where um, hopefully they'll like me enough and they'll want to get deeper into it and they'll check it out. So, and then later on when you guys are much more, much, much bigger, we talk about getting sponsors and things like that, but don't think you can't do it. That's the biggest thing. Don't think you can't do it because you can. This is that you guys have good personalities. I enjoy talking with you. Sorry about all the technical issues, but um, but just realize that there's a there's a place for you guys. You guys have a hook. You guys have a story. There's a place for you in this space. So just keep pushing forward, prolific and consistent. That's what I can recommend. Nice. Thank you. Thank you so much for that advice. First of all, two things I got from that. You're uh, we are not your favorite podcast, so I'm kind of upset about that. <laughs> number two, <laughs> um, I don't One have a number top two. three thousand at least. Oh, all dude, right. that's awesome. 
That's awesome. <laughs> There's a million. There's a million. There's... <laughs> We're in the top uh, at least like yeah, that's, yeah, true. 20, that's true. 20, that's true. 26 and a half percent. <laughs> well, I, again, a huge thank you to uh, to you, uh, Mr. Bob <laughs> Evans, for joining us. Um, we thank you for, for taking your time out and actually pulling over and, and hanging out with us on the side of the road. Uh, but again, you can join um, Bob Evans over at TheWrestleLife.com to learn more. Uh, thank you again for joining us. If you don't mind hanging out after we just end this broadcast. Um, and again, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you guys for joining us live or if you're watching later on Spotify or YouTube. And have a great night.